Greta, thanks for being here. Oxygen and all, which is a way of life for you, having cystic fibrosis. So I want to raise awareness about cystic fibrosis and what this is. You right now are waiting to get on a transplant list for one lung, two, maybe they're gonna put it sideways. Once you're on this list in the next couple of weeks, what happens? Then the clock starts. <laughs> um, it can be from one day to an average of 132 days. Um, it can be a little longer, you know, it varies. Um, it depends upon how, 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 much, how quickly a match comes. So basically you have your bag packed at the door. And if they call you at three in the morning, you're ready. You go. Where will this transplant take place? At um, Brigham and Women's in Boston. Um, that's the, pretty much the closest facility uh, other than New York Presbyterian. But so you my, have to be ready to go either place, whatever they tell you. Well, we interviewed there in New York. We decided that the Boston would be the best. Um, and basically, yeah, we're gonna get in the car and go, no matter what time it is. So let's back up. What brought you to today? How old were you when you were diagnosed? What happened? Take us down the path. I was diagnosed at six years old. Uh, they didn't know a lot about the disease then. And um, I, was having, I was having exploratory surgery my appendix erupted going on the, you know, in the OR. Uh, three months later in pathology, a uh, technician noticed that there was some mucus on the organ. And he said, uh-oh, we have some trouble here. So he contacted the pediatrician and we all had a meeting, my, mom, my parents, not myself. And uh, basically it led to testing and I tested positive for the cystic fibrosis. Prior to that, I was treated for asthma, and so they missed it. Well, that, you gotta understand. Way back then, <laughs> how old are um, you now? Let's forty-six. All right, you lived a this long time. With cystic yes, fibrosis. so forty-one years ago, when I was diagnosed, it was really there wasn't that much information. Nowadays, they're testing, uh, you know, why you're why you're pregnant. I think about sixteen weeks. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot more information, a lot more ways, you know, technology has come so far that they can tell when in you, utero. Now, it, six years old, you have cystic fibrosis, but you're not the normal case, if you will. You have all different kinds of things going on. Let's, let's get into some of that. Yeah, it, they realize also it varies. Um, there's different gene typing. Um, when I first was diagnosed, they thought that there was just one particular kind. And eventually all the symptoms would follow. Well, that's not the case. Um, I've been blessed enough to have a, a rare variety and I don't have the pancreatic problems, the diabetic problems. Um, pretty much the only problem I have was the lung issue. The deterioration with your breathing, you've gone up and down and up and down. You're at a state now where you need that transplant. Yes. <laughs> or you won't live. Yes. What is that like to deal with just having to have that transplant? Well, I think I've learned to live day by day. And, and you're a mother, we should point that out. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't dwell on it. You know, I know it's a process and things are going well and I'm excited about it. And um, I have to just go on live. I mean, you know, we all are not guaranteed tomorrow. And whether it's cystic fibrosis or someone comes and has breast cancer or is diagnosed with leukemia, I mean, we, we all have to deal with our own situations. Now, you've been undergoing a lot of testing in oh, order yes. to get on that list. And you said to me, this is not for the faint-hearted. No. What, what kinds of things happen to, that you have to go through to get on that list? Well, there's a tremendous amount of, of testing and appointments. Uh, pretty major. Which is tough because you're really sick. 
<laughs> you know, this is, you have to show up to appointments and you have to, you know, oh, yeah, and, and including pulmonary rehab that you have to go through twice a week, exercising two hours, you know, each time. And because they want to keep you active, they want to keep it so, you know, your lungs are, you know, you're working and you're not, you know, just kind of sitting around and deteriorating. Did you ever say, why me? When you were, you know, you were diagnosed as a little kid, so you've lived with this a long, long time. But you seem to have a spirit about you that as sick as you are, you continue to help others try to find the way with their own cystic fibrosis disease. How are you able to do that? Well, you know, when I grew up, there wasn't a lot of information. I didn't understand growing up. Um, I wasn't sure about my future or how long I'd live or, you know, when would I get certain, you know, ailments of the, of the disease. And I find that, you know, information is, is the best. To know more is better. Um, so I've researched and I've studied and I've learned along the way. And you've connected with people all over the world. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I mean, through the internet, of course, now it's a great thing because you can talk to somebody, you know, in Australia and, you know, converse about their disease and, and help them, you know, go through some of the things that I've been through. Best pieces of advice for children who have been diagnosed with this, for families that have been diagnosed with, with CF? Um, see your doctor regularly, follow, follow the instructions they know best and um, be encouraged and, and the best thing that my mom always did and my dad was encouraged me to do what a normal child would do. And so you climb trees and things oh, like yeah. that? Oh yeah, climb trees, <laughs> I skied, I swam, I did gymnastics. You know, the more normal and the more active you can keep a child's life, the better. And there's going to be down times where there may be hospitalizations. Um, I was fortunate, you know, not to have a lot of that. Um, you know, colds and so forth last a little longer if you have CF. So downtime from school. Mm -hmm. Is there a point at which you said, now's the time for me to seek information about transplant? Did you always know it was going to lead to this? No, no. Um, I had so many years, you know, with my my childbearing years. I went, oh, I'd say almost 20 years without even an antibiotic. And, you know, I had four healthy children, and life was pretty normal. Um, it wasn't until 2000 where I had a microbacteria that they left uh, untreated for about seven years, and that's how I had the pneumoectomy. And um, since then, you know, I've been stable enough with the one lung to live a pretty normal life in terms of, you know, I can go to the store, I can go to the movies, I can spend time with my granddaughter, I can have a lot of, a lot of fun, but, you know, I can't uh, snorkel. I can't. <laughs> I can't. But you've I mean, been doing a lot, Greta. A oh, lot. I know. So you've lived with this. You talk to other folks about what it is to have this disease. Yeah. And now you're facing a lung transplant. And what have they told you? You're such a tiny person. <laughs> yeah. Are they going to do one lung, two lungs? What's happening? Well, because of the fact that I had one lung removed, mm -hmm. That was uh, five years ago. That cavity had, has decreased. So they went and they did a bronchoscopy and they did measurements and so forth. And because I'm little in nature to begin with, they're thinking we're going to do one oversized lung. And the way they do is they position it so it it's it's larger than the left side here. This is the two lobe lung and they kind of slant it going to, towards the other cavity because they don't feel, they think that there's probably not going to be enough room for two. But being with, 
having a one larger lung for me and my body size would be like having two regular normal size lungs for me. Do you know what you're going to think once you get that call? I can't imagine. I'll probably be in shock and won't think. <laughs> I'll probably just, um, you know, just, just get ex I mean, I'm sure I'll be ecstatic and then I just go, you know, you just go for it. And there's always that possibility each time you get called, they usually call two people because if one person at the last minute doesn't work out, um, so sometimes you can have a false alarm and that happens often. And what have they told you about possible rejection? Have they told you if it works beautifully, you'll never have the oxygen again? Is, is that correct? Um, usually, you, know? you know, after recovering shortly thereafter surgery, um, I've talked to a lot of patients post-surgical. When I did my pulmonary rehabilitation class, there was one gentleman that was four months uh, post-surgical. He was doing fantastic. He was exercising. He said, you wouldn't believe it. Just waking up, he said, and being able to breathe. Um, he was pretty severe. Uh, he had actually COPD, not cystic fibrosis. But uh, he said it was just amazing. So you look forward to waking up from that and being able to breathe again like you used to yeah. without the oxygen. Yeah, because you got to figure, I have to think about, okay, I'm going here, we're going to pack this, you know, how many tanks for how many hours. I do have a concentrator that goes in the car and, you know, I have all sorts of equipment that doesn't hold me back from going or traveling or doing the things that I want to do. Uh, fortunately, today they have that, that available. Um, but, you know, it's always on your mind. You know, it's something that, you know, I didn't have to think about before. And um, so that I'm definitely looking forward to. <laughs> you know, just getting up, jumping in the car, just taking off somewhere without, you know, having to prepare and bring everything. And Well, Greta, thank you for being brave. Thank you for helping others while you are so sick at the same time. And we wish you just great luck in having a new lung and being able to breathe again. Yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, it's amazing. And the team in Boston is fabulous. I um, wish you well, Greta. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.